And as a result of thinkers like Lucretius and Cicero, Middle Platonism would evolve from the combination of Stoicism and Platonism. The city of Alexandria would become a beacon for religious movements to come out of Christianity, Gnosticism, as well as other mystery religions through the Middle Platonist world are on the rise. By the time we get to the second century, Christianity is not legalized yet, but it is a religion that is tolerated by some. And as a result of this, you have the second century boom of Christianity and Gnosticism. Roman religious institutions in the provinces were not merely reflections then on different levels of Romanization. They were also useful counters in the competition for prestige, honor, and status that was once the defining features of the provincial culture across the Roman world. You see, as I mentioned, the Flamen Dialis was no longer in service anymore, but Augustus brought this back in 11 BCE, and the ancient priesthood of Jupiter, which was left unfilled. Not surprisingly though, this has been a classic example of religious neglect. Some ancient authors write in approval of Augustus' appointment of a new priest after a long gap as one component of his revival of traditional religion. You see, Augustus fixed up and rededicated 82 temples in one year. The revival of ancient Roman religion was back, but not just in Rome. This time, it was all over the Mediterranean, and it was all Roman. Initiation inevitably meant entry into another secret world. It was particularly associated with foreign cults, which met privately. The cult of Mithras was adopted by the Roman imperial cult throughout the Roman Empire, and as a result, the Magi influenced religion all over the Mediterranean. Mystery cults were the new thing now. In the cult of Mithras, individuals probably belong primarily to one Mithraic sanctuary and its group of worshippers. Christians, too, had a set of procedures for new members, which varied from group to group and over time. Augustus' reforms would change religion for the next 150 years. Even after the collapse of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, the Flavians would follow suit. They would also build temples in honor of Isis, and foreign gods were seen as something that Rome was proud of. Over in Egypt, an even more interesting story happens. This is the story of the Serapium, the religion of Serapis. Let's see what Tacitus says about this story. How this god came to be. So Tacitus is talking about a story about Vespasian, upon leaving Judea, goes to Egypt, and at the request of a lame person, healed him and had his arm grow back in the name of Serapis. He was convinced that there was no limits to his destiny. Nothing now seemed incredible. The great excitement of the bystanders. He stepped forward with a smile on his face and did as the men desired him. Immediately the hand recovered its functions and daylight shone once more in the blind man's eyes. Those who were present still attest both miracles today that there was nothing to gain by lying. The origins of the god Serapis have not yet been canvassed in any Roman authorities. The priests of Egypt give the following account. King Ptolemy, the first of the Macedonians to put the power of Egypt on a firm footing, was engaged in building walls and temples and instituting religious cults for the newly founded city of Alexandria, where there appeared to him in sleep a young man of striking beauty and superhuman stature who advised him to send his most faithful friends to Pontus, 
to fetch his image. This would bring blessings to the kingdom, and its resting place would grow, great and famous. The youth then appeared to ascend into heaven in a sheet of flame. Impressed by this miraculous omen, Ptolemy revealed his nocturnal vision to the priests of Egypt, who are used to interpreting such things. As they had but little knowledge of Pontus or foreign affairs, he consulted an Athenian named Timotheus, a member of the Eumalpled clan, who he had brought over from the Eleusinian mysteries to act as priest of the religious rites, and asked him what strange cult and what god was meant. Timotheus found some people who had traveled to Pontus and learned from that near a town called Sinope. There was a temple which had long been famous in the neighborhood as the seat of Jupiter Dis. Indeed, near it there also stood a female figure who was commonly called Proserpina or Persephone. Ptolemy was like most despots, easily terrified at first, but liable when his panic was over, to think more of his pleasures than of his religious duties. The incident was gradually forgotten, and the other thoughts occupied his mind until the vision was repeated in a more terrible and impressive form than before, and he was threatened with death and the destruction of his kingdom if he failed to fulfill his instructions. He at once gave orders that an embassy should be made ready with presents for King Skidrathermus, who was then reigning at Sinope on the envoy's departure. He instructed them to consult the Oracle of Apollo at Delphi. They made a successful voyage and received a clear answer from the Oracle. They were to go and bring back the image of Apollo's father, but leave behind his sisters. Now think about what just happened in there in that passage. We were just told that this god Serapis is the father of Apollo, who's married to Proserpina, who's also Isis, and he's linked to the Eleusinian mysteries through this priest Timotheus, and also the oracle at Delphi is saying where to find this god. So we have Athens, Delphi, Sinope, Egypt. All these places are linked in a sort of universal priesthood that's starting to form in Egypt where this god has the ability to be linked with oracles from all over the Greek world. The most famous and important Delphi, Eleusis, Sinope, Egypt. This god Serapis, who they found in Sinope, was important to Delphi and Eleusis. The story now grows grander still. The god himself, it says, embarked unaided on one of the ships that lay beached on the shore and by a miracle accomplished the long sea journey and landed at Alexandria within three days. A temple worthy of so important a city was then built in the quarter called Rakatus on the site of the ancient shrine of Serapis and Isis. This is the most widely accepted account of the god's origin and arrival. Some people, I am well aware, maintain that the god was brought from the Syrian town of Seleucia during the reign of Ptolemy. The third of that name, others again say it was from this same Ptolemy, but make the place of the origin the famous town of Memphis. Once the bulwark of ancient Egypt, Many take the god for Asclepius because he cures diseases. Others, Osiris, the oldest of the local gods. Many again think he's Jupiter as being the sovereign lord of the world. But the majority of people, either judging by what are clearly attributes of the god or by an ingenuous process of conjecture, identify him with Father Dis, which is the ancient Roman Father Jupiter. Now that is so, so appalling. 
to read because the emperor of Rome is linked to this god who is the highest god of all Egypt, who is important for Delphi, he's important for the Eleusinian mysteries, he's important for the Seleucids, he's important for the kingdom of Pontus. What Tacitus is trying to say here is that this god of Serapis is the most important god in the Roman Empire. That is a big claim. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm pu pu putting this up is because I just want to show you here is where the Serapis priesthood gets famous from. But let's go over to Pontus now, Pergamum. So I mentioned how after Alexander the Great conquered the East, his kingdom was divided up. Lysimachus was in control of Thrace and Turkey. Lysimachus, after his death, his kingdom got split up as well, and the Adelid dynasty reigned in what became the kingdom of Pergamon. And the kingdom of Pergamon becomes a Roman province in the year 63 BCE when Pompey the Great conquers all of the East. And so the priesthood in Pergamon was following suit of Egypt. They have a altar of Serapis, and now this is adopted into the Roman imperial cult. So a universal priesthood is forming now. Pergamum, Egypt, and this royal priesthood that Pompey the Great allows to stay in power in Syria. 